when a tired polar bear kept chasing a man in a boat. He didn't know what to make of it. But once he discovered why, he immediately burst into tears. Out on a routine trip with tourists, guide Roland Warrior was in the middle of imparting knowledge of the local traditions. When he spotted something in the water, he was sitting at the back of his boat, turning the motor to power the small wooden vessel. Through the ocean near Kotzebue, Alaska, heading out towards the Beaufort Sea. As he looked back to check on the engine, which was making a sputtering sound, he was surprised by a large white object, floating less than 100 feet from the boat. Roland squinted his eyes to get a better look. As an Inupiat guide, he was very familiar with the local wildlife, and he knew in an instant that this was a polar bear. What he didn't understand was what it was doing. It didn't seem to be moving very quickly. If at all, and they were already some distance from any land. Roland decided to reduce the speed of the boat to a slow drift. He apologized to the tourists but explained that. Polar bears were protected in this area. Besides, this would give these lucky visitors. A rare up-close experience with a polar bear. However, two of the tourists objected. They knew how dangerous these bears could be. And preferred to be taken straight to their destination. There was no convincing them. Even when Roland told them how. Often he encountered polar bears. They were unconvinced, so reluctantly, Roland agreed. As a guide, he had to respect their wishes. Starting up the motor again, he prayed. That if the bear was in trouble. It would still be there once he returned. But he didn't need to worry. He soon realized that the bear was following him. Slowly treading through the water. There was no denying it. The white predator was being drawn to Roland's boat. As he dropped off the tourists on a nearby island. The bear had already covered half. The distance between them. As he circled around to meet the animal. He radioed a nearby lookout for assistance. Knowing that if there were a problem. It wouldn't be a one-man job. Luckily, there was a research team nearby. But they would have to hurry. Roland told them he could see the bear struggling to swim. And as he approached. The shocking realization hit him. This bear was tangled in a fishing net. As it twisted and turned. It failed to free itself and was. Using up precious energy doing so. The tour guide didn't know it yet. But the poor animal had already. Been in the water for half a day. And didn't have much longer. Upon seeing the distressed animal, Roland began to cry, like the rest of his community. He was deeply committed to protecting the local wildlife. They could see the environment rapidly changing around them. And the animals were the first to feel the effects. Roland felt in his heart that he needed to help this bear. Though it wasn't uncommon to see polar bears alone while they hunted. There was something heartbreaking about spotting one so far from the shore, struggling to free itself from a man-made trap, even restrained by the tangled ropes. Roland reminded himself that this was still an animal that could attack at any moment. He needed to be careful. Taking a thick rope from the boat, he fashioned it into a noose large enough for the bear. If he made it loose enough, it could be used to keep it afloat while he waited for help. Swinging the rope like a lasso. Roland tossed it into the water. Hitting the target on his first try. But as soon as he secured the bear's body. He realized that a much greater challenge lay ahead of him. Even with the buoyancy of the water. The bear's weight was immense. This was a 900 pound beast. Roughly the same as a grand piano. Within a few minutes, Roland was struggling. He wasn't helped by the bear, which was twitching and wriggling its body, now trying to free itself from two pieces of rope. Roland could feel his forearm and bicep tingling with pain. His only hope was that the research team 
would arrive soon to assist him. To Roland's surprise, a group of fellow Inupiat fishermen appeared first, having spotted him from a distance. With three people now, they each took turns holding the rope, keeping the bear above the water and trying to slowly guide it towards the shore. But it was fighting hard against them, stubbornly refusing to be led anywhere. Even among the group of fishermen, it was proving impossible to wrangle this huge beast. Each time they made some progress, the bear would reverse it all in seconds, splashing its body around and dragging their boats at will. It was simply too strong. Thankfully, the research team arrived before. It was too late and shocked the fishermen. By drawing weapons immediately, with barely a word, they shot the bear with a strong tranquilizer. They explained it would take some time to work. But the sedative would make the task easier. As time went on, sure enough. The bear's movement slowed. Its muscles relaxed. And it became much easier to pull. Roland was still feeling emotional. But wiped away his tears with his shirt sleeve. Conscious that there was a job to be done. Together with the scientists, the villagers were able to gently shepherd the polar bear to the safety of the shore, pulling it onto its back with a huge group effort. It took a few minutes to remove the net, which had been tangled through each of the bear's limbs. The more it resisted, but then followed a tense moment. Inupiat members thought the task was finished, but the scientists looked to be preparing for something else entirely. His community was yet to fully trust the team. Although they had been poking and prodding around for years now, the Inupiat people were yet to see them complete any real rescue efforts. In fact, this is why Roland had been hesitant to call for the assistance of the scientists earlier. The native people had been guardians of the local polar bear population for centuries. Local customs and traditions tied them to the environment, dictating that they must be protected. When a group of scientists showed up one day from a university in California, many were suspicious. According to this team, they were writing research papers and working with a conservation group. But the Inupiat had good reason for trepidation. Stories had circulated between many different indigenous communities about scientists and officials offering similar services only to prepare the area for deep sea mining and destroy the environment. Roland's fellow tribesmen were not going to fall into the same trap. The tourists they could manage as they were there to see the sights and they were a handy source of income for the area. But with science, it was difficult to know the intentions behind it. And once the polar bear was laid out on the shore, Roland and the group of fishermen began to doubt the scientists' intentions. When they opened their medical bag, an array of syringes, knives, and scalpels was revealed. Don't hurt the Nanook, one of them. Fishermen yelled at the scientists using the indigenous word for the polar bear. It is our job to protect them. The researchers tried to calm down the fishermen, who were growing increasingly restless. Years of distrust and suspicion were boiling to the surface. Roland put himself between the two groups, acting as a peacemaker. He told his fellow Inupiat that there was no reason to distress them yet, and to let the scientists carry on with what they were doing. One of the scientists thanked him, and the team got to work. With deft hands, they checked all sides of the bear's body, looking for injuries. They said before checking the heart rate, pupils, and claws of the animal. Finally, they softly glued a tiny piece of plastic above its shoulder, explaining that they would now be able to track and monitor it helping them locate it in case of an emergency. Then the group slowly moved further inland to 
let the polar bear recover on its own. Soon, it was rolling around, stumbling to its feet and shaking its fur as though it just had a bad dream. Before plunging into the water and swimming away, the group rejoiced. While Roland and his tribesmen realized that the scientific team was there for support. Ever since, the community has collaborated extensively, sharing vital information about the environment that is helping to safeguard the entire area. The Inupiat people shared their vast knowledge of the area and how they managed the wildlife population. And the scientists made use of it for noble purposes. Looking from a distance, a bridge is crowded with people. It was nothing at first, but a bear also appeared here. Hanging upside down outside the bridge. Holding the edge of the bridge with both hands. What happened? Why was the bear trapped on the bridge? The incident happened in California. The United States. Perhaps because of the good weather that day. The grizzly bear walked out of the wild and came to a nearby bridge. Usually, the grizzly bear rarely leaves its own territory. Unexpectedly. This trip almost changed its life trajectory. Just as it was crossing the bridge. The grizzly suddenly saw two cars. Approaching from the opposite side. The grizzly panicked and didn't know. How to avoid the cars for a while. The cars were getting closer and closer. And the time was running short. Perhaps out of desperation. The grizzly looked at the guardrail of the bridge suddenly. And jumped over it. Unexpectedly, this jump almost cost him his life. The grizzly grabbed the edge of the bridge's guardrail. But was stuck in the fence. Just like the grizzly is stuck here waiting. For someone to find him. When a passing man stumbled upon. A grizzly bear outside the bridge. He immediately called for help. However, the person in charge. Who rushed to the scene said. That there was no way to rescue the. Place where the grizzly was stuck. And there were no tools available on the scene. So he had to think of a way. Until the next morning. The rescue team rushed to the scene of the accident again. Fearing that the grizzly bear would not be able to hold on. Fortunately, it obediently maintained the posture of being stuck in the bridge and did not dare to move at all. What is unbelievable is that this grizzly bear has persisted for 24 hours and it has never thought of giving up life. No matter how difficult it is, there were many people who participated in this bear rescue operation and there were also many passers-by watching this rescue operation. There was a sea of people on the other side of the bridge. Under the watchful eyes of everyone. The rescue team started their rescue operation. Some rescuers cast nets under the bridge. And made all follow-up preparations. In order to save the bear. Some people hoisted the grizzly bear. From the groove of the bridge. When the grizzly fell. The rescue team cast a huge net to help the grizzly. And the giant net caught the grizzly. And brought it to safety, however. People can't get in touch with grizzly. Bears for the first time. It is a wild animal, so there is a certain. Degree of aggressiveness. Especially when this kind of experience is life-threatening. The grizzly seemed to be frightened. Motionless, and probably still in a daze. After confirming that the grizzly had no sense of attack. The rescuers sent it to the rescue center. Afterwards, the veterinarian found that the bear had no skin trauma, but was frightened and was fully qualified to be released into the wild. Humans and bears have always had an indissoluble bond. Some people will help grizzly bears in distress, which is understandable, but some people choose to be the closest friends with bears. And everyone is surprised when they hear it. This incident happened in Russia. I have to say that the fighting nation is crazy. And even the pets they raise are different from others. 
This woman from Russia eats and lives. With the big brown bear. They have a very good relationship. They often go out and play together. And even sleep together. One person and one bear are like old friends. The woman's name is Veronica Ditchka. She is an animal lover. In 2019, she rescued a huge brown bear in a closed wildlife park and named it Archie. For a while, she took her best friend Archie to go fishing and even let him try to row a boat. Veronica has always emphasized that this big brown bear is very safe by her side. So there is no need to worry, the brave Russian woman said. That she did not ask for trouble when she took the huge brown bear to paddle a boat to fish. And they were already very good friends. Veronica once posted a video of her going fishing with a big brown bear on social platforms. Veronica spent the whole afternoon on a lake in Novosibirsk. Russia, looking for food for this big guy, who looked a little scared to outsiders for dinner. The big brown bear Archie looks very happy and enjoying himself. I saw Veronica fishing leisurely in the lake in a small boat, holding a fishing rod in her hand, waiting for the fish to be hooked, accompanied by a brown bear, which resisted the urge to jump into the water to hunt for itself. For this reason, it even imitates Veronica to hold the fishing rod together and learn the correct posture for fishing. Veronica sometimes hugs the big furry friend next to her. One person and one bear accompany each other like old friends. The big guy even rode the boat for the owner when she was tired. The picture looks very sweet and incredible. Their rescue two years ago has made them so inseparable that Veronica has no doubts that the potentially deadly animal will never betray her. To prove it, they often take to the water and go fishing. Both having a great time, Veronica said that she and Archie are very close friends and cherish each other's company. And she is not worried about any problems in their relationship. She felt that Archie was a trustworthy part of her family. They ate and lived together. And Archie slept in her arms when he was scared. And hid behind Veronica when he was shy. Veronica also posted some photos to show how close she and her little friend Archie are. And she has repeatedly stated that Archie will not attack and hurt humans. Which is a magical feeling. Because Archie was kept in captivity before he was rescued. He was raised artificially since he was a child. And he had no ability to make a living on his own. So they felt that he could not be released into the wild. So Veronica had to take him with her. And Archie also regards her as someone close. Archie spends every day with the family. And has fallen madly in love with playing in the water. He really likes to go to new places. So every photo shoot is a joy for Archie. He is very excited that I end this regard. Netizens have two types of comments. The first one is that it is no big deal. And that bears are much friendlier than humans. Bears have never invented anything that is specifically harmful to humans. And humans may be dominant in this respect. The other is that this is very dangerous. It was only a matter of time before the bear would go back to being an animal and attack her. Many tragic endings tell us that even if humans raise wild animals from cubs, to the size they are now. The danger cannot be eliminated. If you look at the large carnivores that are kept as pets, you will find that 99% of the people who keep them eventually die may have something to do with it. Similar things happen many times. For the vast majority of wild animals, our living room is a very noisy environment. And they who like to be quiet will feel anxious for a long time in this environment. Animals can become moody and can become brutal in a matter of seconds. 
which can be fatal. In addition, wild animals cannot adapt to life in human cities. Being a pet will greatly damage their health. Not to mention legal issues. Wild animals are not suitable for living in our homes. Which is not only very bad for their health. It can also greatly interfere with our daily lives. Some of their habits will also affect our lives more or less. Therefore, wild animals may only be watched from a distance and not played with. For their own good is also for the good of human beings. If you really think a critter is in trouble, call your local wildlife center for advice. But don't bring them home. It probably won't do them or your family any good. Plus, what they need may not be a bottle full of organic skim milk or a more comfortable nest. But the wider nature